All right, uh, let us move along. Let's go back to the lightweight division here. So Pettis moving up to 170, one of the mainstays at 155, and a man that I've been wanting to talk to for quite some time because I'm wondering where he fits into everything. There's a log jam of sorts at 155, and we were supposed to have him on the show just a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't believe it. Mid-show, Ray Janelle sent me a text and said, ah. I cannot join you today. And I said to Corporate Jake, I said, Ray Janelle has never let me down. He has never canceled on me. This has to be serious. So I was very worried. It's great to see him back in good form. Al, how are you? I'm doing great, Ariel. It's good to be here. Oh, my God. My heart sunk when I got that text from you. I mean, you are Mr. Reliable. You have always been there for us. What happened a couple weeks I ago? I am. And I never made, never make the same mistake twice, as I told you, Ariel. So... <laughs> When I, when I found out I was going to be on the show today, I stayed in on St. Patrick's Day just so that I knew that I was going to be in good condition to be on your show today. I'm not going to tell everybody what happened. Okay. Because I'm it's a little embarrassing. So I'm not going to lie either. Okay. But I'm not going to tell everybody. Okay, fair enough. But we're here now. I stayed in on St. Patrick's Day just so that I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for this interview. Was that tough? Like, were, were, were you were you offered to go out and you had to say no? Not really. I have a lot of things going on, so it was for the better <laughs> for everybody. What do you got going on? Oh, it's a lot of... Uh, well, I, I text my manager every day when I wake up, and I try to see if there's a fight lined up, but there isn't. I've been offered some fights, but I don't know if they were serious offers. But I do have a lot of deals going on as far as the real estate is going. Uh, as you know, I sell real estate on Long Island, and the busy season is upon us. So I'm uh, I'm I'm gearing up for that. I'm 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 working hard, working hard for my buyers and sellers, and closing those deals up, cashing those commission checks, making them happy, making myself happy. We're doing good, Ariel. You look like you're doing good. You seem like you're in a good place. By the way, how come you're not upstairs? Usually you're upstairs with like that maroon wall. Yeah, I was down here. I was doing some work and then uh, I just figured I'd stay down here. <laughs> okay. move, every, move everything upstairs. I no, was no. down here, so I figured, why not? Uh, could you tell us about some of the names that have been thrown your way? I was actually offered a fight against Tony Ferguson about a week ago. Oh. And I accepted it. Not knowing that all this stuff was going on, um, but now hearing about you know what what he's going through and everything uh, makes sense. Why? I mean, I don't even know why that was offered to me. That if they knew what was going on, I think um, I don't know. It's just a weird situation. I think he's a great fighter. Um, he's a little out there, but. Uh, you know, it, it seems like this is going a little bit past that. So I'm I'm hoping that he gets the help that he needs. This this fight game can make you crazy, man. So I hope that I hope everything goes good for him, and and uh, I just hope the best for him and his family and everything. Yeah. It's uh it's it's upsetting to hear something like that because we're we're all in this together, and uh, you know, we we kind of we we all have the same goals and and to for something like that to happen, I just it kind of freaks me out. So it, it almost makes me want to just walk away and I, uh, not, I don't even, not even that just, I don't know. It puts everything in perspective. Sure. Sure. It's a scary thing. It's absolutely scary. We don't know the reasons um, behind everything, but uh, it, I, I can understand why a fighter like yourself would feel that way. And again, I yeah, echo yeah. everything that you're saying. It is definitely a very scary thing. And I think everyone, regardless of what you may think of Tony Ferguson as a fighter, I think everyone is pulling for him who's a fan of the sport. Don't, don't want to see that at all. Um, I was curious. The, the reason why I, I wanted to have you on a couple weeks ago, because when, when I saw the Max Holloway announcement that he was moving up to 155 and getting an interim title fight against Dustin Poirier, I was wondering what you thought of that because here's a guy who's obviously the champion at 145, but to get an interim title fight at 155 after your situation with Khabib um, made me think, I wonder what Al thinks about this. So what did you think when you heard that he was getting that interim title fight? Uh, you kind of heard rumblings of it happening before it happened, before they announced it. So I was kind of ready for it. And it just seems par for the course nowadays. Uh, every, every, person with a title is chasing another title up or down and they're not defending their titles and really it's 
It's Connor is really to blame a lot of it for. I mean, good for him. He did it, but he's never defended a title. Max, on the other hand, I can kind of see uh, I can kind of see a little more validation for him either going up or down wherever he's gonna you know go for that second title because he has really put on a clinic at his weight class. He's basically beat everybody majority of the guys that would be fighting for a title at 145. So go up to 155 and kind of let the 145 division play out. I don't know whether he has plans on going back and, and fighting down there again, but um, he's definitely with the, with the way he's handled himself as a champion. I think he's, he's earned the right to go up if he wants to. And right now the, the true champion is out. So he gets that interim title shot against Dustin, and we'll see how everything works. We'll see how everything works itself out. So you didn't feel slighted. I mean, I, nah, not not really. I don't think so. Um, nah, I I had a big win. You know, I put on a good. I've been assured by the UFC that the the next fight will be a big one. Okay. So I'm in no rush. I, I'm. Taking, I'm handling everything that I got to handle right now on my end as far as um, my other businesses and stuff. So um, when the fight happens, it'll happen, and I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to this fight, seeing how how Max and Dustin will look, because uh, I, I I've pictured myself fighting the both of them, and uh, I wonder how that fight's gonna play out. I'm looking at your your last five fights on our little snazzy wall over here, and it's a really impressive list, in particular the last four. Masvidal, who just looked great last weekend. Um, Sanchez, who looked great, who's who's turned back the clock, went the distance with Khabib, and, of course, the win over Kevin Lee. So you do deserve a big fight. You should be um, in talks for a big fight. By the way, what what did you think of Masvidal's performance, and in particular the fight after the fight, the the three-piece and, and a soda? I thought I liked everything about it. I thought it was, <laughs> I liked everything about it. I thought uh, he fought. You know, he's he got hurt in the beginning, came back, kept his composure, won. With a, I I liked the the combination he landed at the end. He kind of switched stances and came with an overhand left, uh, dropped him. I no one's stock is higher right now than Masvidal for sure, and. Uh, you know, having a win over him is is tremendous, and all the guys that I beat are are looking good and continue to look good. So I, it says a lot about me as a fighter. No, nothing that I didn't know already, but I think just speaks to everyone else as far as how tough I am and and who I've been in there with. And I, I root for I root for everybody that I've fought, except for Kevin Lee. Uh, <laughs> I root for everybody that I fought because I just want the, them to win, and when they when their stock rises, it makes me look better win or lose. So I uh, I was very happy. One thing I would have uh, liked to gotten a little insight is yes. he's very close with Colby Covington. Yeah, they're they're very you know like good friends and teammates. So. What the, and I think it's kind of like a. They seem like two totally opposite people. I don't know how they're like friends or whatever. Yeah. But um, I would have liked to see what his thoughts were on who you know how that would have how that's gonna be. Uh, who's gonna get the title? I guess Colbyton Colvington's gonna get the title shot. But I it's just it, it's an interesting little, it, maybe like a tag team match. It's him and Tyron is uh. Askren, right? It's Askren yeah, and yeah, Tyron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Askren and Tyron versus <laughs> Col Colby, Colby. And it's like, that'd be like, the tag team match. And the way MMA's going right now, fuck it. Throw them in a tag team match. Let them freaking... That'll that sell a lot of pay-per-views, right? Well, I, I think... I, so are you saying that you're disappointed that I didn't ask Masvidal this early in the show? Because I know you watched no, the no, show no. religiously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not disappointed in anything you do, Ariel. Come on. <laughs> never. I'm just... I'm just... I, for my own... I don't know. I'm curious... Next well, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell to, you why. Talk to Masvidal again, so then. I, I will. I, I will catch him after his flight. But here's the thing, I understand what he's saying, but he is coming off a two-fight losing streak, and he hasn't won a fight prior to this one, since you know his last win was January of 2017. So I understand what he's saying, Bigfoot. But like, 
how does he get a title? He's not going to get a title shot. He's not going to get a shot over Colby Covington. That's just crazy. Yeah. It's a huge win, no doubt about it. It's a massive win in Valtzum, but I just don't think he's getting a title shot anytime soon. Yeah, you're right. There's a logjam. Like, there is a logjam at 155. Here's my pro Here's the biggest issue. For, like, if I was you in your exact position, I feel like there's no light at the end of this tunnel at 155. Like, when is this logjam going to open up? Now I'm hearing Khabib might return in September, potentially in Abu Dhabi, which would be great, but it's still in September. And then what happens if he wins and then Connor wins his next fight and then they do the rematch? Like, I could foresee, and I hope I'm not being pessimistic here, it's not going to open up for some of you other guys for a very long time. Ariel, I've I've figured it out way long ago that you can't count on anything. So you got to go out there and just get it yourself. I'm very happy with what I'm doing. I mean, I've been in the real estate game for like two and a half years. And I was asked to speak in front of thousands of people last month um, in Arizona at, at a real estate summit uh, in front of people that are making millions of dollars a year. So that there's there's so many different avenues for for a person who's gotten to the the top of um, one discipline. You know, I've I've been I'm not, being ranked number four in MMA is it, it. I can do that in anything. There's anything any if you said to me, you got to become number four in the world in whatever it is. Aside from like something crazy like basketball or you know something like that, where I don't have like the physical, you know, I'm not tall enough or whatever. But if it's something where if I can work hard enough at it, there's nothing that I can not take over. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on just doing what's best for me. And if the right fight comes along, the right fight comes along. But like you said, there's a log jam and they're jamming up more because now, let's say Holloway wins the title and then. Who knows? The interim title doesn't mean anything, but I've heard Dana did say that he's going to get the next shot. Whoever wins that gets the next shot. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm not, I used to think a lot about it, but now I'm just thinking about finding the right house for the right buyer, the right, uh, you know, working hard for them. And when I fight, I fight. I'm still in the gym. I'm still working hard because I enjoy doing it. I'm not doing it because, like, what anything else I'm doing? I really do just enjoy training. I enjoy the gym. I got the best team around me. Um, you know, it's just it's enjoyable. It's just enjoyable, man. I you know I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna like go crazy calling out. You know, develop a whole like weird stick to try to get the title and no no chase people down and whatever. But and maybe that's what I, maybe. I'm making a mistake by not doing that? I don't know. No, we don't want but you to do that. I tell you what, I freaking go in there and I freaking fight. Win, lose, or draw, I go in there and I fight. And I, I mean, I got all that nonsense out of my system. I was, I was wrecking hotel rooms when I was broke. <laughs> I don't need, when I, you know, now I'm, now I'm doing it the right way. I'm focused. I'm hungry. No matter what I'm doing it, I'm doing it to the best of my abilities. So Wow, that's, I love that's this. All that's all that's all I'm focused on, Ariel, is just Yeah. I'm Wait, glad you love it. Is love is it. Raging Al dead? Is that it? No, I mean look, I'm sure there's like I'm still me, you know what I mean? I'm still whatever, but I'm just I'm over trying to I'm not gonna like stress myself out and go crazy about this. When when I want when I when they get me a fight, then I, then I fight. And you know I'm always going crazy. I'm always doing whatever I can. I'm raging out in the in the cage. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I like it. You're all grown up. But so so you weren't being... about grown up. Oh, like, come on! I no, feel I don't it. Ever, I don't ever want to be. I don't ever want to grow up. Mature. I always want to be. Yeah, I guess a little bit, little bit, little bit mature. I don't know. You weren't being serious when you asked for your release on on uh, Twitter a few weeks ago, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I was, I mean, did I think that they were really going to release me? No. Right. So, but I mean, Dustin Poirier types out that he, he tweets out that he wants to be released. So if you, I mean, it worked for him. He got the title, he got the title <laughs> shot. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll just tweet it again that I want them to release me. Maybe then I'll get a fight.
And I don't know that one like a, a fight that gets me. Like I just freaking, I had two. I had I fought. What was that? Five, ten rounds in my last two fights. Hard rounds, you know, against top guys. I mean, I I think I think Kevin Lee's probably done right now with like his career. I think he's he's probably done. What do you mean you done? Know? Like like finished? Retired? Yeah, yeah, I think he's checked out. I think okay. he's whether he fights her again or not, he's retired. Wow. I mean, you, you, I think I ruined him. He's he's telling people he thinks he won the fight. Still, he's out of his mind. That guy is shot. But before <laughs> I before I freaking turned his brain into mush, I think that uh, he was up there. He could have he could have put up a good fight against Khabib. He could have put a he could beat he he. Even mentally checked out, he could still maybe beat McGregor. You know what I mean? And McGregor, he's all over the place. It's, it's, it's just a freak show at this point. So everyone's just out there doing doing what they got to do, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I want to see Al versus Nate Diaz. That's one that I want to see before it's all said and done. He's a fighter that I respect tremendously. I like the way he does things. I think that'd be a great fight. I think that'd be a great fight for the fans. I think it's a fight that everyone would want to see, and we're both. I think we're both very similar in a lot of ways. Okay, final thing. Perfect world. When do you want to return? You like, like my sh- what was that? Le- you like my shirt? Oh, it's a nice shirt. Iso Peck. What's that? Iso. Yeah. Ah, uh, CBD. CBD oh, company. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Down in uh, down in Florida, they they grow all. Their- it's a great company. They just started sponsoring me. I was using them before they sponsored me, and we kind of worked out a deal. So I I b- I believe in their product, and I think that uh. You know, I think we we're gonna have a great long relationship together. I like the people that are are uh, behind the company. I like what they stand for. So I think that uh, I, I would recommend that. Ariel, do you are you? Do you ever get sore, Ariel? <laughs> no, do you I get don't, sore. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Okay, so I think you should. We got to start off getting you in the gym, get a little workout going. Okay. Get a little sore, and then you when you you know your muscles are you can throw on the. Uh, yeah. You know, C- some, of, some of the CBD. Okay. And I'll get you some. All right. But it's a great company. They grow all their 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 stuff themselves down in Florida. Even like the uh, the eucalyptus, all this is grown in-house. And uh, the hemp plant, they do it They do it all down there. They're not coming. They're not, it's, it's, uh, it's a great company. And I'm, I'm looking forward to working with them. Okay. Good for you. Uh, we have 10 seconds left. G- give me a month. When do you want to return? June. Okay. Please don't smash and break your computer. I heard you broke it the last time. Please don't do that. I have a graveyard of computers because every time I'm on your show, I sl- I slam them. So I'll be nice and gentle and just close it like this this time. You see, he's all grown up. He's mature. He's mature, Al. No more raging, Al. It's mature, Al. Great stuff.